Howdy folks, I am John and I'm here to talk to you about serpentine soils and gypsum. Like check out this chunk of serpentine and it's a rock that's around this area pretty heavy. There's vents of it and veins of it and it weathers down into our soil. You know, notice it's got some magnetic properties. And of course, as it weathers down into our soil, we get this same kind of magnetism in our soil. This is our driveway soil. This here hard drive magnet's gonna have some little rock chunks stuck to it. The thing about serpentine is it has not only magnetite, it's got a huge amount of magnesium. And it has a low amount of calcium. And when it comes to a garden soil, you need those in a kind of a balance. You need a lot more calcium than you need magnesium. And we've got almost about half as much magnesium as we've got calcium on a parts per million basis. And that's a really bad balance. Look at all this stuff stuck to the magnet here. Now, that means that we've got a lot of really good minerals in the soil that gives us really excellent taste with everything, but it's too much magnesium. Now, magnesium is needed. It's, it's one of those secondary nutrients that plants need in, in fairly high amounts, but you don't need an overabundance and excess of it. And you need a lot more calcium and those two have to be in a balance you can see out from our soil test here that our magnesium is way high and our calcium's not as high as it should be so what do we do about this we use this here gypsum now gypsum is it's a mix of calcium and sulfur it's natural mineral it's what White Sands National Monument's made from. And there's lots of different types that you can get. You can get it prilled in little tiny pill form and it's a slow release. You can get this powder type here, which I like because it's very fast release. But the thing is not everybody needs gypsum and some people it could actually hurt you. So how do you know if you're gonna need it or not? For one thing, a sandy soil isn't gonna probably be able to do anything with gypsum. If you're needing calcium added in, put a limestone product in. You don't want to use gypsum because it will actually work. Okay, here's how this gypsum works. The, the calcium molecule is huge and the magnesium molecule is small magnesium molecule likes to just hang on to one little piece of clay particle and and then makes that clay particle kind of like stick to others but they stick together as a, a mass they don't flocculate and form soil structure and that's how you get those clay soils they're just don't aren't open uh, in, in our case, even though it's, it's a gravelly mix, the, the high magnesium levels actually bind and, and make the to soil tight. We can water and, and the water will just run off for a while until it finally starts to go in. And then the, the magnesium seems to want to push the water away. So here's what you do. We took some sieved uh, soil from our driveway, added gypsum to the one with the handle, and the other one is our control. And then we added the same amount of water to each. And then we steered them and left them sitting up in the window for a while to settle out. What will happen is the calcium will bind onto the soil particles and kick off the magnesium. The magnesium will then bind up with the sulfur and when you irrigate lots, it will combine with the water and wash through beyond the root level or to the very lower reaches of the root. You want to get it 6 or 12 inches away from the soil surface. 
That way the rhizosphere has the proper balance of calcium and magnesium. Now, see, the thing is, the soil particle will, will have a negative charge. The magnesium will have a double positive charge and it'll latch onto that soil particle and probably kick off anything with a single charge like nitrogen that was there and knock that away. And then it hangs onto that and you've lost your nitrogen now. And, and now you're, what'll happen instead is when the calcium comes along, it's a big ass molecule. It's got a lot more strength, even though it also is a double positive charge. It'll knock off the magnesium. The magnesium will bind with the sulfur, which is a double negative charge and boom, away it goes. Now what happens, the beauty of this is you get the flocculation that you see on the left. The clay particles are binding together because that big ass calcium molecule can combine lots and lots and lots of clay particles into one little tiny flocculate that will fall down to the bottom, make the water more clear because it's heavier now. And the, the great thing about this flocculate is it has the proper texture and, and structure to it so that these are separate little flocculations and now air can go between them. And that is how the chemistry of it works. Now, here it is here, it's calcium sulfate. And, and incidentally, when the sulfur binds with the magnesium, that makes magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts. And, and this is kind of like Epsom salts in that everybody's always saying use this, but there's times not to use this, there's times not to use Epsom salts. It all depends on your soil and you really ought to have a soil test. Now you can put this onto bare soil and then work it in, water it in, till it in, everything like that. Or you can put direct over your plants, which is fine too. But you can't put it so heavy if you've got the plants there. It's 40 pounds per thousand square feet is, is a good level for putting it onto an existing garden area. So you can put it over the plants, you can put it around the trees. It should be put over the whole garden all at once. It only needs to be done every two or three years. And again, this depends on your particular soil. And of course, you ought to wear some sort of a particle mask or respirator. This isn't the 70s and we don't need no white powders up our noses no more. So basically what you're going to want to do is put a light coating of this over the soil. Again, after your soil test recommends you use gypsum. Because if you've got a sandy soil and you're getting a little low in magnesium and you put this on, you're, you're going to wash your magnesium out. And magnesium is, is one of those things that's kind of like the red blood cell of the plant. The magnesium's very, very involved in, in the process of photosynthesis. It's like hemoglobin. You do not want to be low on magnesium, but neither do you want to be having an overabundance of it. In the garden, in nature, everything needs to balance out. Generally in nature, everything does it, but sometimes, well, it doesn't get exactly what we want. For instance, the serpentine soil leads to a, a very diverse community of chaparral in California that's rather unique and, and very full of life. And particular plants that can exist in this calcium deficient, magnesium high soils. But if you're gonna be growing a garden in it, you're really going to have to look into the chemistry of it. And again, when we talk about chemistry, it's not all about synthetics. 
Gypsum is a natural product and and the calcium is a natural thing, the sulfur is a natural thing, and both of these are in effect fertilizers that plants really need. You need to have this, but they have to be in the proportions that the plants and the entire rhizosphere can use. Now, even though this has two particular items that are used to being, that are quite often used for pH adjustments, these are in the proportion that together they wash out. So here's the dusting you should end up with, nice and light. Now this powder type I enjoy because it washes in so quick. I mean, this is designed for fertigation where you just dump a batch of this in a thousand gallon tank of irrigation water. So we're gonna wash it off. This is the fun part of this actually. I've also got an excess of boron so I can use gypsum to reduce it there. My phosphorus and potassium are very high. Those might go down also. This should overall give me more balance in the garden. Well, folks, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have yourself a good day and have a great garden.